We now have a working body manager instance on EC2 and we are ready to start using the device manager. This is the place where we can edit and configure our firewalls and other foreign products. Right now we have no devices yet. So we can start adding our first firewall by clicking the add device button. And we can add our AWS FortiGate first. And since our FortiGate has interfaces on both public subnet and private subnet, same as the Forty Manager, so it can be reached on either interfaces. Let's use port 1 for example, which has the IP address 10.10.10.30. And we can use that to connect to the firewall from Forty Manager. We also need to enter our admin credential because we're going to give Forty Manager access to our device and it should be able to write configuration and policy changes to it directly on our behalf. And now we see that the 40 manager was able to pull our device information, including the serial number, the model, and the firmware version. We can optionally add a description. You may also notice an issue with the ADOM version. We will address this in a separate video regarding ADOMs and administrative domains. But for now, we can skip that and just go ahead and do next. Following that, the 40 manager will go through some checks and import tasks before our first firewall will appear in the device manager. And now our device page, we see all the 40 gate information on our AWS 40 gate. Inside our device page, we can see the main information like the serial number and the firmware version, the device model, and also some licensing information regarding this device and the 40 guard services. So we are able to manage it as we were directly logged into the 40 gate unit. We can conveniently run a CLI command directly from here using the built-in CLI console. We still need to log in, but this is very useful because it gives us ability to SSH to any device directly from our central management console. And from our CLI, we can do any troubleshooting commands or any quick changes that we need to do on the device directly. We can get things like the routing table, which also can allow us to Bing interfaces or Bing other IP addresses. So this is very quick way we can use the 40 manager to get a quick access to our device CLI. We have multiple devices we can choose from the list. And we will also see the device configuration in the database. This is the repository where 40 Manager keeps a copy of all configuration files of our firewalls. And we can download this configuration file as a backup of our firewall configuration. This will generate this text file. We can later import it or restore it to another device. Also, the 40 Manager keeps a total revision history of our device. Right now we are at the first revision, which is our first configuration file that we imported from the device during the import process. But as we make additional changes to the 40 gate, the 40 manager will keep a copy of all the configuration changes, which is very good for auditing and for rollbacks or reversing changes in case they break something. From the top, we can also configure firewall static routes we can see we have our single static route pointing to our VBN interface, going to our on-premises firewall. We can modify or add routes directly from 40 Manager and then apply changes to the firewalls remotely. Other configuration are also showing like interface settings, which shows all interfaces on our firewall and can also be edited from this screen. Now it's time to add our on-premises firewall as well. We can add it using the management IP 192.168.1.99. And to confirm cross-cloud reachability, we can try to Bing from our AWS to on-premises and we are able to Bing through. So we are sure that we can reach our on-premises from AWS and we should be able to manage this device using 40 Manager directly. But as we add up our IP and admin credential, 
we see that we are having issue reaching from 40 manager to our on-premises firewall. It says that network is unreachable. So let's think about this for a second. 40 manager uses port one as its default route and it sends traffic to AWS router, which is just a software router. And AWS router just follows whatever we have configured on our VBC route table associated with that particular subnet, which is the public subnet. So inside our VBC routing table, we see that we have our local network, the 10.10.0.0 slash 16. This is our network on AWS. And we also have the default route just going to the internet gateway. That means traffic distant for 192.168.1.0 slash 24, our local network, will just be sent to the internet gateway. And if you try to send something to an internet gateway and it has a destination IP address of a private system, it will just be dropped immediately. So this traffic is not really reaching our VPN at all. And we can simply fix this by adding a route in our VBC route table and just let it know that to reach 192.168.1.0 slash 24, from the 40 manager perspective, you just need to send it to the firewall. And for our target, we can select a network interface that belongs to the firewall. We can simply choose the one for public subnet since we are in the public subnet. And this way, traffic from 40 manager will send it to the 40 gate public interface and 40 gate knows how to reach this network because it's defined as a static route pointing to the IPsec VPN. Now it's also good to know that this solution can be achieved by connecting to either 40 gate public or private interface. This will just dictate which source interface to choose in your VPN policy in the firewall as the traffic will ingress the firewall this way. So in case you use public interface, it will be port one source interface. If you choose the private interface, your source interface in the policy should be port two. And the destination in both cases will just be the VBN interface. And now our public subnet has the route table is configured properly to allow the communication. Now let's try to add our on-premises firewall one more time to the 40 manager. And this time we are finally getting a response from our device. So now it's gonna go through and it's gonna do the same thing. Import our configuration and device settings from our firewall and add it to our 40 manager database. And if you notice, we got no issue with the ADOM version this time, and that's because our device is on the same firmware level as the ADOM. But again, we will get to that in the administrative domain video. Now our device manager shows both our firewalls, lists the firmware version, management IPs, and we can try to open our new on-premises 40 gate. We can do the same things as management task, connect to the CLI, get access to our device shell directly from the 40 manager once we log in. We can also get to the revisions and download our latest revision as a backup configuration to our firewall. This is also can be retrieved at any time directly from the 40 manager, but it's good to keep a local copy just in case. Also under static routes, we have the same route for the VPN interface, this time pointing to the AWS cloud firewall. And other settings in here can include SNMP. We can see the SNMP setting. And for more into that, you can watch the SNMP video. But we can also modify any of those settings directly from the 40 manager now, which is convenient and fast on a large scale. Now, if we try to log into any individual firewall from this point on, we will get a new prompt letting us know that this device is centrally managed by 40 manager and that you should be managing it directly from the 40 manager now. We also get this lock icon on the top showing us the 40 manager IP and that we are on read only mode right now. 
Or what happens if we modify the configuration of the FortiGate via CLI? How would the Forty Manager handle that? Let's check it out. Under Network Interfaces, we have our AWS Firewall ports 1 and 2. Both ports allow administrative access via HTTPS and SSH. We quickly open our CLI console and view our interface config by going to Config System Interface and do a show command. We have port 1 and port 2 configuration and we would like to make a change by removing SSH access from port 2. This is our private interface on AWS. We can just copy the same allow access command and just remove the letters SSH. And we can save it by doing next or end. Now our device has been updated and removed the SSH access. If we try to refresh, now we don't have SSH access anymore. Now if we switch to the 40 manager again and try to refresh our interfaces, we see the change has been absorbed in the 40 manager as well, even though we did not do it on the manager. So how did this happen? If we go back to our device manager, we can see that the device status had changed to auto update. So the 40 manager will always communicate with the device and is aware of the changes. If the status changed to auto update, that means some external update was done on the device directly and the 40 manager absorbed it, okayed it, and just added it as a new revision to the device like nothing happened. Now, not just that, we can also go under revision and we will see what exactly had changed in the device externally. We can keep track of our configuration changes. We can download the latest configuration, compare it with the previous revision, or just show the difference only. This is very convenient to view the changes made on our device. Now let's click on next difference, and this will jump directly to the board that has the board configuration. And the difference is the removal of the SSH service from the allow access statement on board two configuration. There is also an option to show different part only, but as we see, it took it out of context and now we are not really sure which board had this access removed. So the best part is to find which view works in our case and use this option. And if we want to reverse this process, we can manage this change properly in 40 Manager. We can go under Interfaces again, add our SSH access back, now our device status will show modified. That means the change we just did is still staged and not really applied to our device yet. So we have to use the install wizard to actually push changes to our 40 gate devices after we stage them in the 40 manager console. We can add a simple comment like bring SSH access back. And once we click install, the 40 manager will push that change into the device, add another revision into our revision list, and update its latest database with that. This will simplify our management process on the long run and on larger scale. And now our device status will be in sync again and SSH access will be allowed one more time for board two. To enable additional management features, Beside the default view, we need to modify our global display settings, which will allow us to enable any section of the configuration that we use to be visible on our device manager page. This helps simplify the view and not overwhelm users with all options showing by default when many of them may never be used. Good option to add in our case are DNS configuration, IBSIG Phase 1 and Phase 2, since we do use VBN. Additionally, we can show different monitoring metrics as well, not just configuration. We can add our monitoring for VBN and DHCP pool as well. Now, we have to be very careful with the VBN configuration, since if we break the VBN, we will lose connectivity to our on-premises firewall. We can make a risky change to push a VBN change to both devices or both endpoints at once, 
but we will leave it for another video. Now under monitor, we have our VBN monitor matrix. And also DHCP lease log conveniently brought to us to Fully Manager for our view. And finally, you might end up in a situation where the device config status would show as a conflict. This usually happens when config install failed, verification fails, or something major that confuses the Fully Manager system. So to fix that, we can just go into our device revision and request a retrieve config. What will this do is it will communicate with the device. It will pull a fresh copy of the config and save it as the latest revision inside our Foley Manager database. And now our config status is green and is in sync again. And that's how you add, manage, and configure Foley gates using Foley Manager Device Manager. Thank you for watching.